we bless the Lord for all that he's done. And he's done a lot. Amen. 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 Man, I, we are at, uh, coming to the close of this year. And I want to thank all the saints for their faithfulness this year. And how you've uh, grown. And I've seen the growth and you've testified to your growth. And I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it's good. Man, to know that the Lord is helping people in this day and time. And I want to also thank those who have watched this on the uh, television, on the Dayton Spiritual Access Channel, and also on the internet. Um, I've gotten comments and compliments from several different sources, and some say they really have appreciated uh, the uh, messages and the content of the messages. Uh, and so that lets me know that I'm on the right path as far as the ministry that the Lord has placed in me. Uh, it's more important today, I think, to tell the truth than ever. Because uh, that's how people get free. Uh, you know, not just to feel good, but to really know what it takes to live and live for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Man, I want to just talk to you for a little bit out of the book of James. Second chapter... The uh, 14th verse, i read just a few verses down here, start at the 14th, um, maybe through the 18th or maybe the 17th verse, 14 through 17. He reads as follows, what does it profit, my brother, though a man say he have faith, have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food. One of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, you gave him not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not worked, works is dead, being alone. Yeah, man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And out of the 17th verse is where I want to draw a topic at. It says, Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead. Being alone. My topic today is talking loud and saying nothing. There was a song written by James Brown. I remember that song. And the lyrics, uh, I guess the main course was like a dull knife just ain't cutting. Just talking loud and saying nothing. You know, if you have a knife in your hand, yes, it's a knife, but if it's a dull knife, it's not good for much other than cutting butter uh, or spreading jam. But when you really want to cut to the quick or something to cut through some meat, you're going to have a sharp knife. And faith is the same way. The interesting thing about faith is, when I studied this, faith is mentioned 247 times in the scriptures. Only twice is it mentioned in the Old Testament. So the other 245 instances of faith being mentioned are all in the New Testament. And I found that very interesting as I began to meditate and think on this. It came to me that they didn't live so much by faith back then. They lived by the law. It was spelled out specifically what they could and couldn't do. They had people telling them, ruling over them. They had kings even. Now, even though faith wasn't mentioned, when you go and look in the book of Hebrews, it's brought into uh, our attention then through Christ Jesus. Because it goes back to bring those people in uh, 
who were in the Old Testament, even though, like I said, it wasn't written in the Scriptures, but they still had faith. Just because the Old Testament doesn't talk about it that much, what the Old Testament is actually doing is rather than talking about faith, the Old Testament is showing you faith. You see the works. So the Old Testament actually is about the working of faith. The New Testament is about the preaching of faith in Jesus Christ and how you can accomplish things because the focus had to shift to Christ now that he was, can come into the world and to believe on him. See, because now we're not having to do the work. You know why? Because he's doing the work. We don't have to do the work. If we have faith in him, he will do the works. But, again, I'm not talking about saying we have faith. I'm talking about our faith actually producing a work in us. Amen. Church folks is bad. Today for telling folks, you say something to them, Oh, I pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. They might in that moment. And they leave and you leave and they forget all about you. I remember back in the old days when church folks, when somebody was sick, a bunch of them would get together, get in the car. they go to the hospital. They'd have their oil with them, their prayer cloths. They'd go in their hospital room. And sometimes they'd have to ask them to calm down because they were raised such a ruckus. Now, they meant well. A little over the top. But given the choice of the two, I would take the little over the top than what I see today. You tell folks you are in a situation today, and this is the saints we have escaped. The magic words, I'll pray for you. They believe that they have satisfied the requirements of stewardship, of fellowship, of brotherhood, and just saying to you, I'll pray for you. Knowing they got a refrigerator full of food, and you don't have none. But they're going to pray for you, but they ain't going to get one of them chickens out of there and put it in your pot. Not all of them. Man, this is just how it is today. You know, you we, we, a lot of these churches out here, they're trying to feed the poor and feed the hungry, and that's good. They're doing a good job at that. That's a good thing. But many times, and you have to realize something too. Let me add this. These scriptures really were written to those that are within the church. And charity must first begin at home before it's spread abroad. So they'll have people in their con congregation, knowing they see them in the same clothes, Every other week, they don't have a lot of clothes. They're not trying to help those people in the church. They're going to do a great work outside the church. Ignoring the brothers and sisters that are sitting there, ignoring their children. Now, there are some people who are taking advantage. They're trying to take advantage of churches. I understand that too. I had a conversation recently with someone who was telling me about some folks at church and help that weren't members of the church. Came every once in a while and they had asked them for some help, and the church said, well, we'll deal with that at the church. And somebody had asked them in the church what was going on. They said, well, they ain't going to help us, and that wasn't the case at all. And people were just lying. So you have to have a man in the mind of God and a discernment of God to have faith. Now, he begins to talk here to, to the church. I want this clear. He says that, what kind of prophet? Now, what is a prophet? A prophet is something that you expect to receive for your investment. So what kind of return do you get if you have faith but don't have any works to go with your faith? I hope I made that clear where you understand it in a clear way. Amen. That if you expect to have a prophet, you have to have works or investment. It's just as though you went out into your garden and you decided that you wanted to have some tomatoes, but you never planted the tomatoes. And you come back out three months later and you still don't have any tomatoes, but you say, I had faith, I'm going to have those tomatoes. Maybe you did have enough faith to go out there and put some seed in the ground, but you was expecting your faith 
Lord, water my tomatoes. Lord, don't let those tomatoes dry up in the ground. You got a big garden hose sitting over here 10 feet away. Never picked it up to turn the water on when you saw that God didn't turn the spigot on from heaven to make sure your tomatoes was watered. And then you get mad and say, I had faith, but I didn't get any tomatoes this year. You didn't work that garden. Maybe you did go out of the water, but you saw that you had, when you went out, you saw in the leaves of the tomatoes that there was wormholes in it which should have told you the worms was eating your tomatoes. And you was going to have to go out there and take care of some pesticide or use whatever you use, amen, to kill those worms before they ate, before the bugs ate all your tomatoes up. But you didn't do it. You see, faith, church, is... Faith is a process of what you believe being manifested in what you do. We have people who are lazy today, not just in the sense of working and other things like that, but who are lazy in faith because what they want is they want God to do everything for them. They want God to... Uh, 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 to provide food for them, which he said he would, but sometimes you got to go get a job if you want to eat. Now we have a system here in America where you can depend on the government, but there are a lot of places in this world they don't have the, the, the government to depend on. They got to go out and dig up roots and boil them. They got to <coughs> they want meat. They got to catch it and kill it. They can't walk down to the nearest Kroger's and go into the meat section and. Order their prime rib up, take it home and cook it. Oh, they want to have a, a, a bacon. They got to catch a hog, a wild hog. And then they got to slaughter it and kill it and cut that bacon up and get it out and slice it up and then cook it up before they can eat it. See, we have it made, but faith has to have some works. The question then he asks is, can faith save you. Can you just be saved by faith alone? You talk to the average person who's in the church today and you ask them what's the most important thing that they have to have. They will give you the correct answer. The correct answer to that is faith because we know without faith it's impossible to please God. But what they don't understand and they don't get is that that faith just in that statement is dead if they don't have works to back it up. So in essence, they become just this, as though they were a person who had never been saved. Because if you say that you love me, then you're going to see some work that show that you love me. And you say you love me and it's my birthday and you got a pocket full of money and you didn't Gave me nothing for my birthday. I'm talking to the husbands and wives, husbands and wives. Amen. Sons, take care of your mama. Amen. You get your mama something for her birthday. Amen. And say, Mama, I love you. I got a pocket full of money. I didn't buy nothing for you because I didn't want to stand in line down at the store. Man, what kind of love is this? Now, when you was your diaper, what if I, when your diaper was dirty, I had to change it because I didn't like the way it smelled. See? You see what I'm saying? So you have to have some words to go with your faith. He says, if a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you gave them not the things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? For me to see someone hungry, or you to see someone starving, or to see someone that doesn't have to tell them I'm praying for you. I got you in my prayers, my brother and my sister. And not have the compassion in your heart to reach out to help them just a little bit. Man, what kind of profit is that? What have you invested in that person? Nothing. You have to understand. Jesus is the one that you're trying to get the profit for. And you have to win people over through love, through your kindness. Now, you don't have to be a fool. Man, you can, you're allowed to tell people the truth, and sometimes that's what they need to hear. Sometimes everybody's going around patting them on the back, telling them, 
You know, oh, blah, 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 and I feel sorry for you, and I know how you feel. I went through the same thing. But sometimes you need to look him in the eye and say, look, my brother, let me talk to you. Can I talk to you just openly, honestly? Will you accept the truth from me today? And they say, yeah, I, I got some things to say to you. There may not be things that you want to hear, but there are things that you need to hear that are going to help you in the long run. Man, I know you out here and you doing this and you're doing that and this stuff isn't going to help you any. It's going to lead to this death and destruction. I know you heard that before, but I, I'm going to try to help you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick you up on my way to church and take you with me. You be ready. I'll be here at 10.30 or 11.30 or whatever time it is. I'm taking you to church. And, and you go by there and they, and they say, well, I kind of changed my mind. And you know out of love that you got to talk to us some more. Look, I know you don't feel like getting up. Let's just go with what you got on. Come on, we'll sit in the back. Maybe you will hear something. And, 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 and you might have to drag them and with you for a while. And eventually, all of a sudden, you notice that when you come and they're ready. Amen. When you, when, before you get there, they're waiting on you. Amen. To, to come and get them. See, see, it's an investment uh, in people. That, that's your faith. You, you say you, you want to see people get saved. Sometimes you've got to help them get saved because it, it, it's just like a car. A car just don't start itself. It's got a starter in it. And that starter is to help that motor get running. And once that motor starts running, that starter kicks out. And that car is able to run on its own. Uh, and so faith has to be alive. Faith has to be working. Faith has to be motivating. Faith has to show itself. Uh, it's a tragedy today that people who are in the church claiming Jesus Christ uh, don't live for Jesus Christ. Uh, they don't live pure right lives. They don't live righteous lives. Uh, see, they think that all they have to do is come to the house of God and do their duty and, and they fulfill their obligation. And, and they say that uh, I, I know I'm saying that and, and I just got issues and problems, but see, at some point in time, uh, you have to have some work to go with your faith. Uh, there has to be something in your life that shows that you've grown, something that shows that you are a new person that you claim to be. Uh, Sometimes I think that a person has to ask himself, do I have the works to go with my faith? Uh, does my, what I do back up what I say that I believe? And more importantly, does what I do back up what the Word of God says? And so when you look at yourself, many times you'll find shortcomings in yourself. And when you examine yourself, that's not a bad thing. That's actually the best thing that a person can do for themselves. They have to examine themselves to see whether they be of the faith and whether they be in the faith uh, or whether they are just talking about the faith, whether they are just talking loud and saying nothing. Uh, there are millions and millions and billions of people who have been baptized uh, and they could, were confirmed and joined the church uh, that aren't going to make it into heaven. Uh, the reason why is they go on after their initial uh, uh, baptism and being filled, they, they go on and begin to go back to live the kind of lives that they used to live, at least somewhat similarly. They may not be out there as openly as they were, but they still have some of the same mindsets and some of the same mentalities. Uh, and really, truly, in God's eyesight, the, the only difference between them and the person who didn't come into the street is, is that they get up early on Sunday mornings and come to the house of God. Uh, they come in, they praise God, they get their shout on, they get their dance on, and when they finish, they go back to whatever it is they were doing before they got into the faith. Uh, but you have to live for Jesus Christ uh, if you're going to be saved. Uh, you see, faith is only a faith of speech for many people. Uh, they have faith talk down to the path, uh, but it's a false profession. Uh, it's not a real profession. Uh, you see out here now, they're talking about this stolen valor. Uh, where people out here are pretending that they were war heroes. Uh, well, we have stolen valor uh, in the house of God uh, because we have people who are professing and confessing uh, that they are saved and that they have faith. Uh, but when you examine them, uh, you don't see a man, the 
works to go with the faith. Uh, and so this is called a dead faith uh, in James' opinion. Uh, see, James labeled this uh, as an unprofitable faith. Uh, he said it was vain and empty. Uh, it was a hollow faith. Uh, it's a wordy faith where people can talk about being saved, uh, but not really being saved in their core principle uh, of their belief and in the content of their mind. Uh, they're not saved when they're tested and tried. Uh, and this is when you find out uh, if your faith is profitable or not. Uh, carrying a Christ-centered life church uh, means that everything uh, has to be about Christ. Uh, it all has to be uh, based upon the Bible. Uh, you cannot just go out and do what you want to do uh, and say what you want to say every day. Uh, you can't live your life uh, just for yourself, uh, having fun and partying all the time. Uh, oh, I have a whole lot of fun, uh, but I also have a whole lot of seriousness uh, because there is a time to have fun uh, and there's a time to be serious. Uh, we should be able to laugh uh, and have our good times uh, just like the world has theirs. Uh, we don't have to walk around uh, all sad looking all the time, uh, or all serious all the time. Uh, but there are times where we need to get serious. Uh, people need to see us uh, in our humanity, uh, but yet see the glory of God in us. Uh, we can't be too deep uh, where we are so above everybody else, uh, where we're so holy and righteous uh, and they're unrighteous. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, <clears throat> see, you can still laugh and have fun and enjoy being saved. Uh, I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy being saved, uh, but also there's a time uh, when you've got to stand up and be a saint of God. Uh, there's a time uh, when you've got to say no. Uh, see, I can't do what you're doing. Uh, I mean, I laugh with you, uh, and we had a good time, uh, but you're at the end of my rope. Uh, you're as far as I can go. Uh, matter of fact, if they go in certain directions, uh, sometimes you just got to leave them uh, completely and move on. Uh, get out of their environment. Get away from them. Uh. Sometimes with some people, huh, you just can't even associate with them. Huh? And I know folks say, huh, I don't know what to do. Huh? But you remember Jesus in the book of Matthew huh, when he had the young man huh, who wanted to follow him. Huh? And Jesus said, huh, well, you go and sell what you have huh, and give it all to the poor. Huh? And then I'm going to let you have treasures in heaven. Huh? But you've got to come and follow me. Huh? But the young man when he heard that saying the scripture said uh, he went away sorrowful uh, because he had great possessions uh, and sometimes church that's what happens uh, because God will put us in a position uh, where he says uh, I want you to follow my dictates. Uh, I want you to follow the word of God uh, and not what you want to do. Uh, I know you've got a lot invested in yourself. Uh, you've got a lot invested in your ways. Uh, you've got a lot invested in in your uh, way of doing things. Uh, but that means that you're going to have to give up your pride. You're going to have to give up this or that uh, if you're going to follow me. Uh, and see, we have people uh, who have great investments in themselves. Uh, they've invested so much uh, in being who they are. Uh, they've invested so much uh, in their image uh, that they can't go and get their hands dirty. Uh, they cannot uh, take off their high heels and, and pull off the wig uh, and pull off the fine clothes and put on some dirty clothes. Uh, to go down into the projects and do work. Uh, we got men who are in church uh, that you ask them uh, to stay and help clean the church afterward. Uh, they got nothing but excuses. Uh, they won't drive a nail. Uh, they won't paint a wall. Uh, they won't clean a carpet. Uh, they won't vacuum. Uh, won't do anything in the house of God. Uh, and yet they want to be the first people uh, up singing the first ones, uh, up taking offering the first one, uh, up doing this and doing that. Uh, and yet when it comes time to, to do the work, uh, you can't find them. Uh, this is the condition today. Uh, and so Peter understood. Uh, and this is why in Mark the 10th chapter, uh, Peter began to tell Jesus, said, uh, Lord, we have left it all behind to follow 
follow you. Uh, see, you have to leave the, the things behind. Uh, your old ways, uh, your old thoughts and old mentalities uh, in order for faith to work. Uh, and cause in faith, church, uh, you can't see where you're going. Uh, you can't see what's going to happen. Uh, you don't have any way uh, of knowing what the future is. Uh, and when you look at where you stand, and uh, sometimes where you stand, it sure looks a whole lot safer uh, than stepping out on this faith thing. Uh, it sure looks a whole lot safer uh, if you stay over here uh, and just maintain yourself. Uh, you see, some people have been hurt in church, uh, and they know that if they step up uh, and take leadership positions, uh, they're going to end up uh, being criticized. Uh, they know with that position, uh, it comes trouble uh, because you're going to have everybody now uh, looking at you uh, and they're going to examine everything that you're doing uh, and begin to try to critique you. Uh, and so people will crawl back and stay in a safe zone uh, because they don't want to take the heat uh, that it comes from working with the Lord. Uh, and sometimes among the people of God, uh, they can be vicious uh, and hurtful. Uh, they can really make you feel like uh, you just want to quit and give up and go back. Uh, but if you got faith, uh, your faith has got to push you through uh, and press you beyond the people. Uh, it's got to press you beyond the naysayers. Uh, it's got to press you beyond the critics. Uh, your faith is going to have to take you uh, into a holy realm. Uh, where you can bury your cross uh, and follow Jesus. Uh, and when you are a person of faith, uh, you're going to find trouble. It is going to come looking for you. Uh, when you start serving God, uh, you're going to have family trouble. Uh, you're going to have uh, house trouble. Uh, you're going to have work trouble. Uh, you're going to have all kinds of things uh, that come and attack you. Uh, but you've got to keep your mind on Jesus uh, because Jesus Jesus went through it, uh, and so did all the apostles, uh, every great man and woman of God uh, that's in this Bible uh, had to endure, uh, they had to go through, uh, they all suffered. Uh, when you begin to suffer, church, uh, you come into a whole new fraternity uh, of brethren, uh, you come into the fraternity uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, you are fellowshiped in by pain. You fellowship in by suffering, uh, but you've got to live by your faith uh, and carry your cross uh, looking toward Jesus, uh, who's the author and finisher of your faith. Uh, keep your eye on the Lord, uh, no matter what they're doing to you. Uh, if somebody's sticking you in your side, uh, just keep on praying to God. Uh, if you got a thorn that's in your flesh, uh, don't you let that thorn. Uh, uh, amen. Deter you. Huh? Don't let that thorn cause you to turn away. Huh? But do like Paul did. Huh? Paul realized that he had that thorn huh? so he could stay humble. Huh? He asked God to relieve him of the pain. Huh? But the Lord said, no. Huh? I don't want you to get lifted up beside yourself. Huh? If I take this thorn out of your life, huh? you might stop praying. Huh? If I lift this burden, huh? you might stop working. Worshiping me, huh? but as long as this pain is here, huh? I know you're going to keep on praying. Huh? I know you're going to keep on calling my name. Huh? And church, that's what I'm telling you. Huh? Don't just be a praying person, huh? but be a person of action. Huh? Just don't be somebody huh? of full of words. And don't have today. Huh? They think that they don't have to huh? perform. Huh? They think that it's all about them. Huh? Well, I got myself under the control. Uh, but no, it's greater than that. Uh, see, there has to be some works. Uh, there has to be something uh, that shows uh, that you are a child of God. You ought to give God some praise for this morning. Amen. Well, Jesus himself said, if any man come unto me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and children and brother and sister, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. For well, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now you have people here, he's not talking about hate as in hate. But what he's talking about is that if you love them more than you love him, 
If you love your father, your mother, or your wife, or your children, or your brothers, or your sisters, or your own self more, you can't carry this cross. Because it, it, this, the, this cross is so heavy that, that if you're trying to help somebody and bear somebody else up, even yourself, the only thing you can focus on is that cross. That thing, if, if you love somebody else more than that cross, you're going to get to a point in your life where you're going to have to make a choice. And you're going to have to choose them or you're going to have to choose the Lord. It's, it's no different than if you were married and you have in-laws and your in-laws don't get along with your spouse and you have to make a choice. Do you listen to your in-laws or do you, is your allegiance to your spouse? Well, sometimes people have a hard time understanding that. Because their allegiance is to their in-laws, is to their families, is to other people. But the first obligation is to that spouse. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of God. Man, you either have it in yourself. Because if you love yourself, you're going to take care of yourself. You're not going to put yourself in any position where it costs you. If your favorite football game is on, and there's a church service someplace that you need to be at, and you love that football game more so, you're going to be watching that football game. You're not going to be at that church service. Amen? Amen. You got people who have missed the baptism of their grandbaby for a Super Bowl. Amen. They won't be in church. They'll be like, uh, tell them, honey, I, you just take some pictures, get the video. I'll watch the video. <laughs> See? But they won't be in church. Because whenever, whenever you love, God is going to give you a chance to find out. Mm. You think I'm kidding? Let me call a fast. And, and y'all favorite TV program be on in the middle of that fast. Or, or, or you got a, a pie in the refrigerator, one piece left, and you worried if I go on that fast, that piece of pie gonna rot. <laughs> yeah, let that apple pie go to waste. And man, you know, there's always something. It don't have to be big for the devil to win. It can be something real small. See, and, and, and many times, what does the scripture say? It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. And so many times, it's, we set off for something small because it has to seem larger than God. So when he put this in perspective about hating your mother, your father, your own children, would you lie to save your child from jail? You know your child robbed something and they say, was your child, you saw him coming in carrying the money, going upstairs, and they say, where was your child at? Oh, he was here. He, didn't, he wasn't he didn't out robbing no store. He was here. He should be here the whole time. I, matter of fact, I just went upstairs to check on him. Bobby Joe, come down here. The police down here trying to say you robbed something. You come down here and tell these police you didn't rob nothing. <laughs> he come right down the steps. No. And then the police leave. Boy, I done told you. You're going to get us both in trouble one of these days. How much money did you get? <laughs> But you won't, well since you're out of that place, you're going to give me some of that money. We gonna, you're going to pay some bills right here. You understand? And don't be robbing no other places. See, this is how some households run. You know, you know would you lie to save your child? I asked somebody once, they were talking about all how important lying was. And, that, and I said, uh, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. I said, I said uh, you got a... Uh, home, right? They said, yeah, I said, uh, if you could lie about one dollar, if, if it was one dollar to save your house, would you would you lose your house over a dollar? Yeah, Essex, man, that's a hard question. <laughs> that's a hard saying. I said, yeah, that's what they told Jesus. <laughs> it's a hard saying. I know what that means, too. They said, well, what, what would you do? I said, oh, wait a minute, I'm asking you. You don't want to say you was all that. I ain't claim to be all that. But I'm just letting you know. I want to know what you got to say. Well, man, you know, I just have to pray about that. <laughs> I had to pray. I, I had to pray over that because Lord knows. Uh, that would be hard, man. And I got to think, and I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, what, what, what do you think? What do you think? We have the Holy Ghost, right? Yeah, yeah, we got the Holy Ghost. I said, well, Abraham didn't have the Holy Ghost, but he had to take his only son up. And it was 100 years old. 
when this boy was born, 100 years old. Wife was 90. <laughs> and he took his son up. Now, he wasn't playing with a rubber knife. This wasn't no, you know, one of these uh, 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 acts. He was serious. He come up there, he threw and kill that boy. Now, you telling me about faith, and I'm telling you, I'll show you faith. You talking about praying and all this, I gotta get myself to, my mind it have to depend on what day it's on, and I would need the Holy Ghost really on that day to have to go through that and all that. You don't made up your mind what you're gonna do now. You just can't admit it to yourself. <laughs> Talking it out, ain't saying nothing. See, and this is why the world has so uh, many questions about us, and why they have, why they're leaving the church, and why they don't have faith. Because they don't see it, they hear it. We telling them what they should do, what should be done, but can we demonstrate it when given the opportunity? You see what I mean? And so. <clears throat> So, faith is challenging because what faith does is faith drives out any remaining part of you that used to live there. Faith can't live in this body with us. If you love yourself, that's what he's asking Luke here. If you love yourself, then faith is going to go without. If you love yourself, faith is going to be lacking. You, you can't live in the same building with faith. So now, you got to get rid of you. Otherwise, like James Brown said, you're like a dull knife. You just ain't cutting it. How are you going to cut through sin and righteousness? How are you going to rightfully divide the word of truth if faith isn't 100% of who you are? We have to become walking faith, talking faith, living faith. Faith in action. That's what we have to become. And when you live in faith, everybody can see it. It may take them time. Because they're going to examine you. They're going to watch you. They're going to look you over. And they're going to, a lot of times they can't find them, they're going to make up stuff. But one way or the other, they're going to try to knock you off your game. Develop your faith, church. Develop your action. Develop yourself who you are so that when you're seen, there's no question about what you're doing. So that whatever you do or say, you can back it up by the word of God. Because if you out there arguing with somebody over something, you can't back that up by the Bible. If you're in a fight with somebody, you can't back that up by the scriptures. Amen? That if you're helping somebody who's trying to hurt you, and that takes a lot sometimes. You know this person lied on you. You know they're the one that, that told the lie on you. And, and somebody's questioning you about something that you supposedly said that you didn't say. And you know who it was that told them. And who it was that said it. And you really don't like it. You want to get even with them. You'd like to see them get theirs for putting you through all this. But you have to understand now that you were in the same position that Jesus was in when he was on that cross. Now you know a little bit of how it felt to be falsely accused. And I hate people lying on me. I will admit it. I will tell you my, in my flesh if there's anything I despise is somebody lying on me. Now if I do it you tell the truth on me, that ain't. Hey, I shouldn't have done it. Done. But I don't like being lied on. Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't. Man, that's one. I know I don't like being lied on. I would tell you I don't like being lied on. But sometimes I had to swallow it. And I've watched God work it out. Mm -hmm. And I just go head on. And I don't like being lied to. Because when somebody lied to you, they're telling you, I think you are just stupid. Okay? Because you're just too dumb to know any better. I'm smarter than you. I've got to figure it out. Yes, that's one of the pride issues. So the Lord had to let me go through that. Now, people lying to me. I'm looking at them every day almost. In, in not my business. I sit there sitting there. I know they're lying to me. So I done kind of just, just switch things up. You know, they come in to buy a car. Well, I'm going to get back to you. 
I said, <laughs> you know what? I said, let's let's just look. We've been on a good footing. Let's just be straight. Number one, I know you don't like the price, right? Right. And number two, that's the best price I can get, okay? And number three, when you leave here, you're either going to go across the street, and you might not because you think I'm watching you, but you're going to go to somewhere else and pull in somebody else's lot, right? Well, yeah. So I know you, you're you done really thinking about me. You're looking for your next best deal, right? Just tell me that. I ain't going to get mad at you. I can't sit up here and kill you. I don't have a gun in my desk drawer. Just tell me. Mr. Essick, it was a pleasure doing business with you. But I don't like this car, I don't like this or that. We're going to look around someplace else. Don't tell me you're going to get back to me. Because when I call you, you're going to be answering your phone half the time. <laughs> if I send you an email, you won't even answer. <laughs> so I get it over with right quick. And they look at me, sometimes they have to laugh. And I say, I say, I, I say, I understand, I know why you're laughing. But sometimes I actually have saved the deal. But, but I'm saying, that we have to as Christians. We can't deal as other people do. You know, we can't get in an argument because I've seen salespeople get mad at the people <laughs> on the spot. And they go, oh, well, what are you doing? I mean, what, what was this? Well, you don't know, like me or something? Something like that? Yeah, no, I ain't thinking about you. I'm looking for a car from my family at the best price. What makes you think you got anything to do with it? Right. I'll buy from a, a blind midget if the price was right. You know? <laughs> It's just, it, it, it's not about us. And so it's the same way with being saved. When you're going through what you're going to deal with faith, not about you. Really, it doesn't have nothing to do about you. It's between God and the devil. The devil's trying to get you in a position to show God up. So he can mock him and say, see, I told you, you die for them fools, look at you. Now how you feel now, Lord? Or when he grabs a soul, especially one that was supposed to be saved in church, he really have a field day then. He can really talk trash. Yeah, he was full of the Holy Ghost. You died. I got a prized possession. The worst thing that can happen is a person who is saved to die unsaved. Mm. That, that, that is the best feeling for the devil. Mm. Getting a soul is, okay, good. He knows he got them in pocket. You know, every once in a while one of them gets saved or something, he'll lose one, he'll, you know, here and there. But he's... As far as numbers game go, he got plenty of souls he get. But when he gets a person who's saved, who been saved, who God has delivered, and he's able to flaunt that trophy in front of God, this is bigger than the Ohio State Michigan football game, people. Okay? I know how I feel when we beat Michigan, but that's nothing like how the devil feels when he gets one of God's children and takes him to hell. He he flaunts that. That's what he's living for. That's why he went after Israel so hard. That's why he targeted Israel. That's why all the attacks back in the Old Testament was toward Israel. Because he was to claim what God has. He's God's enemy. We're not. God's trying to save us. Amen? Amen. We might not like the process sometimes. But we got to have the faith to go through. The faith to endure the faith not to give up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, I said a lot more than I intended to say. I haven't studied all this, but I guess it's from my, <laughs> my heart. You know? But I hope and pray that I've been of help to you. Amen. We're going to open up the altar at this time. If there's anybody Amen. in here that want prayer, need prayer, uh, you know, whether you've been acting up or not, it's okay. Come on down. We're going to pray for you this morning. Amen.